Welcome back everyone to another exciting episode of Final Fantasy IV The After Years. I'm your host Mr. Gazillion and in the last episode we finished, uh, we finished Edge's Tale. And uh, when I started this game and I clicked on continue button, usually it brings me to the last save that I was at. But in this case it brought me back to the last door of uh, Edge's Tale. Uh, one thing that bugged me about the way I ended the episode is that I missed a treasure because I could have went right or left and when you went to left it triggered a, an animation that basically ended the episode or the chapter if you will. So since I was given the second chance I actually decided to go right and in the treasure chest there was an elixir. Mm, that's pretty much it. So without uh, any further ado, let's begin Porum's Tale, The Vanished Lunar Well. As the lunar well sets off from the dragon's mouth towards the new moon, monsters suddenly pour out of the Devil's Road, realizing that the danger, the danger, the Elder of Mizia orders Porum to. Excuse me, I am having trouble reading right now. Realizing the danger, the Elder, the Elder of Mizia or orders Porum to visit Mount Ordeals and find the reclusive dragoon who once served Baron with pride. Well then, let us begin today's lesson. Yes, sir. So we go back in the past for the beginning of this, or... Yes, it's Parham as a child. She looks crazy with those eyes. I wonder how good this episode's gonna be, or by episode I mean chapter. Where is Parham? Oh, you know, probably doing what he usually is doing, flirting with girls and... Wasting his talents on, I don't know, burning random things. Oh, not again. That's right. Let me guess. Yep, that's right. He's flirting with Lenora, little do we know. So there I was on the slopes on Mount Ordeals, facing down the fiery hordes, when I cast a Nozum Blizzard and... Oh. Ow. How many times are you going to be late to training? The Elder is really angry! How many times must I tell you the same thing before it sinks into that thick skull of yours? You've a deal of growing up to do if you ever plan to be the sort of mage Tella was. Two more hours of spell transcriptions for you. Aw oh, man... Lame... Come on, Elder. I was just telling the story about how we went to Mount Ordeals and saved the day. It's important to pass down history. You've only yourself to blame, you know. Shut up, sis. Get this, I've had enough of this stupid training. Huh? Palum! What a troublesome one. Please allow me to go after him, Elder. Where are we going? Do 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 woo woo. Now is this Porum or Palum? I do not know. I have to drag him back before the elder gets any angrier. Okay, it's Porum. Now where would he have gone to? Let's look. What kind of magic do we have? We have Cura, so that's that's good. And do we have any equipment though? Nope. Nothing really fancy, I mean. Okay. Palum? I saw him running like a, like his life depended on it just now. Okay. Hmm. Did he want to go see Lenora again? Yeah, did he go towards Mount Ordeals? Did he went and try and take on the Devil's Road on his own? I thought Palum had to uh, find his life to act his age. Now I see just how wrong I was. Uh-oh, what did he do? There he is. Give it up, Palum. The other one wants to see you. Tough for him. I'm not gonna start my training all over again. No way! Uh, where is he going? Palum! Where are you? Where is that little brat? The other has his creed that the Devil's Road be sealed. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Nobody really needs to use it. Only an emergency. It's a dangerous place, after all. Palum, where the heck did you go? Let's go to the inn. Did you see Palum? 
Even if he is just a kid, a normal person like me could never understand what goes through the head of a genius like Palom. There you are. Give it up, Palom. The Elder wants to see you. Tough for him. I'm not going to start my training all over again. No way. Ah, uh, man. Where'd he go? Did he go on the side of the lake here? No. Did he go towards the Devil's Road? I didn't hear... Oh, there he is. Now he's cornered. You're better than this, Palom. I thought you wanted to be a great sage like Tella. Huh, fine. You're right. You win. You look like you have something on your mind, boy. Look, Elder, you may not be aware of this, but my skills have developed much more than you think. Palom! Is that so? There's nothing else here for you to learn. Is that what you're trying to say? Come on, Elder, you know just as well as I do how powerful we really are. Hold your tongue, Palom. You think so too, right, Porum? Without us, Cecil will have never made it anywhere near Mount Ordeals. Hmm, I suppose you have a point. I know I do, because I'm going to become a sage, just like old man Tella. Tella, you say? Then you have a long way to go, Palum. Growth is not something gained on your own. It is the product of all the people you meet along the way, from Cecil and Tella to everyone else around you. I... I already know that, Elder. I don't need you to tell me. It is a simple thing to say, but I forbid you from leaving Mizdia. It is still too soon for you. Too soon? Well, when is it gonna be too s not gonna be too soon? When you have truly understood the words I have spoken. Can I go out and travel the world once I do? Once you do? Yes. Alright, I'm gonna be here in a flash. She's and the others better be ready for me. Palom! Are you sure you meant to tell him that, Elder? Of course, the meeting and parting one's experience in life help to straighten the self. Yes, Elder. And I'm sure you would like to hit the road yourself someday, Porum. I w what? It is written on your face, plain as day. Oh. And so her chapter begins. Porum's Tale, The Vanished Lunar Whale. I don't want to reminisce too much about uh, the olden days. Let's see. There you go. Several years later. Nobody really knows how long. Theodore's 13 or so. And... Oh. They haven't aged a day. <laughs> despite it being several years later. Hmm. Where are they heading to? Haha! <laughs> Finally I'm on... I'm off on my quest to become a sage! What made you want to visit Kaipo first? Because it's Tella's homeland, of course. What did you think? That's all? What do you mean, that's all? Don't you understand anything? Huh? The title of Sage isn't something to be obtained, it's something that's granted to you. Yeah, that's right. I knew that already, duh. Then, who do you think grants something like that to you? The Elder, right? Uh, no. The people of the world do. What? what? Nobody's going to call you a sage just because you've learned black and white magic. You have to throw away your own wishes and ambitions, Palom, and learn to use your magic to benefit the whole world, not just yourself. Ugh, she's at it again. That goes without saying, Porum. 
Are you sure you know? Well, that's the way Tella was, wasn't it? You're right. Tella traveled around the world with the Elder himself long ago, just like we're doing right now. Wow, really? I knew it! Eventually, the Elder returned to Mizdia and devoted his life to protecting the world through his magic. Tella, meanwhile, continued his travels for years afterward, using his power for the good of all mankind. H how long did he do that for? Oh, at least decades. <laughs> that long? Damn it. And at the end of his journey, he decided to settle down in Kaipo, where Anna was born. Uh, I didn't know that. Do I have to have kids too? Of course. It'll be... It'll probably take longer for you than it did for him. How do you know? You don't know how Tella was when he was younger. Well, I'll give it a shot. I'm in this for the long haul. Yeah, we don't really know how Tella was when he was a kid. He wasn't always wise. And I'm sure the Elder wasn't always wise either. You know? Wisdom is something you gain through experience and uh, experience and people you meet, just like he was saying himself. He should, uh, you know... Explain that he was the same way. Palum is ambitious. That's a good thing. Yeah, finally. What are you complaining about? You slept practically the entire way. We have a long way to Kaipo, don't we? It's in the middle of this huge damn desert in front of us. So we should rest up while we can, you know? Convenient excuse. Alright. So, they're not any older than they used to be. And we've got a flame rod. And basic crappy stuff. And what's the order? Are we in the back row or in the front row? No. Eh, we're in the back row, as we should be. Okay. And Kaipo's not really that far. Let's save, actually, just in case. In the first slot for our episode one of this chapter. Alright, Kaipo, where are ya? It's not that far. We could go to Mist, too, if, uh... I don't know if there's still a mountain in the way. But here we are, Kaipo. Where Tella settled down. No, I don't really know where his house was. It must be near where, uh, Rosa was found, I'm assuming. Wow! It's Kaipo, we're here! What should we do first? Let's take it easy for now, and stock up on equipment. But we've just spent days resting on that ship! Aw, oh, quit complaining. What's the big deal? Hey, dude, what's up? This is the oasis town of Kaipo, the only settlement in all of, Dam of the Dancing Desert. Ah, uh, yes. Nothing much has have changed since the days of yore. Same music. Ooh. Somebody restocked these potions. And this is where Rosa was found, passed out. Just look around a little bit. To pass the mist is still closed. The pass to mist is still closed off. You know, it's giving me one serious headache. Oh, so I guess we can't go to mist then. That's too bad. I really wanted to go see it. We probably could have snuck into Redia's house and in her fireplace and gotten some goodies. Welcome. We got some rod, bow and arrow. We don't want any of it. Which is funny. Why leave the shop open if it's useless stuff? Anything here? No. If you're looking for Tella's grave, it's right by the water. Oh, cool. That's actually really neat. I like that they did that. Nothing much here. King Edward makes regular visits to Tella and Anna's grave sites. You know, I see him there all the time. Oh, I guess his grave is where uh, we saw Anna's ghost, where Edward had to fight that like sea creature by himself. Mind you, Edward was really bad in the previous game. Rumor has it that a ten-legged beast lurks inside the underground waterway. What? Again? We defeated it. Welcome! Uh, nothing good here, that's fine. That means I don't need to grind to uh, 
get the latest and greatest for you guys. Uh, let's check the inn before we go check the grave. The King of Damson erected graves for Tella and Anna right here in Capo. Welcome! Alright, how much money do we have? Only a little bit. I don't really want to buy a bunch of stuff. I'm not going to buy a tent. Um, I'm only going to buy a Phoenix Down, just in case someone dies. Um, and more specifically, if Porum dies. Because if she dies... Oh, this is the bed Rydia was resting in. This was Cecil, before they were uh, attacked by the uh, guards from Baron. Hmm. Leaving town, take lots of cold liquids to drink. Yes, that, that does make sense. No matter what you do, stay away from that underground waterway to the northeast. I guess we have to go through there. Kaipo's gotten a lot busier now that the port's finally been completed. The town of Kaipo is under the domain of Damsian now. Okay. Okay. Alright. So, this is gonna be a fun chapter. Well, could has the potential of being a fun chapter because I like controlling mages. As long as we don't have any more war, I don't see why Kaipo can't become a great city like any other. Well, for one, you're in an oasis and you don't really have much to offer the world in terms of trade. I guess practicing my synchronized swimming near those graves isn't very appropriate, is it? Well, I uh, don't know. Maybe Tella would have liked that. Anna, daughter of the great and gentle sage, rests in this desert oasis surrounded by eternal love. Oh. I didn't realize Anna was here as well. Huh. Anna, the woman Edward loved with all his heart. She must have been a nice lady. Maybe kind of like our mom. Anna, I witnessed in person the grace and profound love you possessed with them. What? How? May you rest in peace alongside Tella for all time. I guess sometimes I wonder if I too have a chance. A chance to become a woman like you, a woman who knew how to love more deeply than anyone else. I guess Tella went to Mizio with Anna when they were kids or something. What? Nothing. Why is this cape shaped that awkwardly way? Tella, the great sage, rests in this desert oasis together with his beloved daughter, Anna. The old man's grave. Well, don't just stand there. Offer your respects to him. So... Yeah, Palom uh, wasn't always the most respectful guy, but he sure liked Tella. Tella, may you be happy together with Anna for all eternity, and may you guide us with your infinite wisdom, especially Palom. <laughs> he really needs it. Hey, old man, guess it's been a while, hasn't it? Well, I'm finally here. I came to visit your homeland and everything. I hope you're watching over me, Tella, because someday I'm going to be a sage just like you. Palom, is this... Is this why you wanted to come to Kaipo? <laughs> Just thought I'd check up on the old man first, you know? Right, on to training then, to the underground waterway! Let's see what that house has to offer. Will they talk about Rosa, about Cecil, Edward, maybe Tella, who knows. Hmm. Ma, you're awfully small to be traveling so far away from home. Do take it easy while you're here. They say a girl who once fell ill here has become Queen of Baron. I'm sure she's a sight to behold nowadays. Huh. Well, you know, I'm sure, you know, Rosa was quite the hottie back in the day. 
all in her 16 by 16 pixels. Oh, hello, dude. Ma, oh, you're certainly a young pair of travelers. Make sure you don't come down with desert fever, okay? Yeah, no prob, dude. Alright, well, I guess we should uh, have enough to uh, get to the waterway. I would like to go visit, um, see if we can go to Mist. I know they said the path wasn't complete, but what do we have to lose? I'm sure the monsters in this desert aren't too bad. And if we can make it, then I'm sure we could find items, so... But no. The path is still closed off, so off to the waterway. It shouldn't be too long of a... of a cave. It wasn't really that long in the previous game. Though there were quite a few treasures, and I'm sure it's gonna be the same in this game. So anything useful? A crossbow. So I guess the answer is no. Ooh, with lightning arrows. Actually, that's gonna come in handy. Though, okay, so attack goes down to 12, but with lightning arrow up to 27. So we're, I think our intellect's a little bit lower, but considering we don't have any, like, physical attacks right now, I think it's worth equipping. And when we walk in the water, we're probably gonna come across a bunch of monsters that are actually weak against lightning, so I think it's a good idea to do this, uh, to equip it. Let's see what we get here. So yeah, so, uh... Um... I'm gonna just try and use his, uh, his fire rod. And see if we can... Oh, actually, we can't hit everyone. So then we'll actually just do uh, black magic then. I don't really have much... Let's try thunder. And she can just attack. Bam! It's a critical, but not a weakness. So let's see what this does. Is it enough to kill him? Oh, it is a weakness. Huh. Maybe because it was a critical, it didn't say that it was a weakness. You can only have room for one message. And I'm glad I didn't buy any Echo Herbs, because A, aside from the fact that I'm never going to actually need them, um, I would have wasted some because these monsters decided to give me some. And here we have a tent. As <laughs> I knew it was going to give one, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're not going to actually end up using it. So, actually, maybe we will. In between caves here. Oh, we're gonna see a ghost of Tella. I don't know why these guys are getting a flashback. Because they were not there. This must be the place, the bridge where Tella and Cecil first met. What's wrong? Nah, it just struck me. I'm really walking down this... Down this path, aren't I? I'm gonna be a sage if I keep this up. Stop thinking about super, superfluous things in the middle of... When we're in the middle of something. I kind of clicked too fast there. Um, I don't want to go straight. I'd like to get all the treasures. So we're going to go this way. And of course, trigger a battle. Um, I think I'm going to, after this battle, I'm going to actually just uh, edit these battles out. Because they're not totally necessary. Unless, of course, they're a necessary battle. Uh-oh, that's not good. What is it going to do? Nothing? Okay. And I think we can just fight him. Bam. <laughs> Eight damage killed him. I'm glad that I didn't waste mana on that, so. Okay, so just hug here. No, let's go to the top because there's probably going to be something to the left over there. Yeah, walking the same path Tella did. And nope, no treasure. What a dead end. We gain a level in this one, which is kind of nice. Uh, we learned some stuff, but nothing, like, super useful. Alright, wait. I just said that, but I don't even recall what it was. That was Cura or Raze, in which case, either one would have been really useful. <laughs> Whoops, here I am just spouting out crap. I don't really mean just because I'm mumbling. Because I'm not really thinking before I'm saying any of the words that are coming out of my mouth. Alright, so let's keep exploring. Let's go under that bridge and get that one treasure. Um, so we're kind of just like revisiting an old, uh, an old dungeon here and going back. Uh, ooh, nice. I think I want Palom to have this. Uh, because it raises... He's the one casting most of the spells, so having his intellect go up is more, more important than having Palom's. So Palom and Param are actually some of my favorite characters in this series, in this game. 
or not specifically the after years, but so much uh, as much as uh, just Final Fantasy IV in general. Um, they weren't they weren't super important to the plot. Like they did save the day, but for the small amount of time that they were in the party, I found they had a lot of personality, and they still do. You know, like. Um, Aporum being the very studious one, and you know, Palom being the rebellious little kid who just wants to power over anything. And I, I just kind of like the fact that they're just kind of young mages, and along the way, they uh, they meet up with uh, Tella, and obviously, he's kind of like a hero to them. So it's kind of fun to see that. Let's hopefully be able to do a small cure before he casts fire, and I failed. But yeah, so it was fun because uh, when you do gain Tella in your team and you have Tella, Pollum, and Porum, what I liked doing was uh, grind some levels so that they could uh, gain skills and spells. And to me, it was kind of like Tella um, teaching them how to be mages, you know, like, uh, and not just them learning it on their own. I kind of like that. I always kind of role-played this game with the characters. I find it adds a lot more to the games because you don't necessarily need to have like all of the story basically spoon-fed to you and like yeah you can have some inner party chit-chat and stuff like that but to me it just makes sense that Tella would you know take Pollum and Porum under his wing and uh, and teach them stuff. And it also solidifies um, the bond or the fact that Porum really looks up to Tella. Well, I guess Palom also looks up to him, but Porum just won't stop talking about wanting to be a sage like Tella. So, and Porum doesn't seem to have that same kind of uh, drive. Not that not that um, she doesn't want to be uh, a sage, but I don't think she's ever actually mentioned uh, what her goals are. And maybe we'll see it in her chapter. Actually, who knows? And uh, I was actually thinking about it, um, I don't know if they actually had the chance to meet Tella's daughter, because by the time she dies, like, Anna dies in, like, the beginning of the game, like, really early on. A maiden's kiss, useless. Uh, yeah, so she dies really early on in the game, and at that point... Palom and Parom have not been part of the party. And when we do join the por the party, I remember Parom kind of giving attitude to Tella, and then Palom being kind of like, hey, pa Parom, like, you know, watch your mouth. Like, this guy, this is, this is Tella. What are you doing giving him, like, attitude? And, they, you know, Palom didn't seem to know, like, oh shit, you know, like, are you serious? So to me, it tells me, this tells me that they have never actually met Tella. And considering they're so young, they might have met him when they were much younger, but I don't know. For them to have that kind of bond or like being like, oh, you know, I wish I could be a woman like you, Anna, it's like, they must have learned secondhand what kind of person Anna was. Not that it's a big deal, I mean, it's not that huge of a plot hole, but it just doesn't make that much sense that they would have met her. So in that battle, there was a yellow gelatin monster, that's uh, the one that's weak against thunder. And, um... One thing, well, you know, you gotta use magic to kill them, so you use, like, a thunder spell, but... Since the thunder has a small, uh, delay, I thought I would f just fight using, um... Porum's bow. But one thing I noticed is that she only did one damage, despite the weakness... Uh, thing showing up. Okay, so I think we're kind of safe actually. I'm gonna use a neither or ether on Palom, but I'm gonna need the tent once we're outside Once we're outside the cave and where I'm guessing we're gonna meet the um, octopus monster Yeah Okay, so I didn't realize that uh, e uh, Nether only gave uh, 50 MP. It doesn't make it that handy, considering the ex how expensive the spells are. Alright, does that raise both spirit and... Alright, let's do that. 
I'm okay. Sorry, Porum, I don't mean to neglect you. Actually, it is Porum's chapter. So, let's give her the wizard one. I'm sure we'll get another wizard hat at one point, but let's give her the Gaia gear for now. Because if ever, whenever Palum leaves the party, I feel like we're going to lose the armor he's wearing. And we don't want that. It does make me wonder who keeps stocking up these treasures. Because who goes through this cave without actually getting everything in the first game? Doesn't really matter, obviously. Though it is odd... It is a little odd when you go to the same game... Uh, the same... Um, dungeon between chapters. Yeah, you go between chapters of the same dungeon and they're, they're filled up with uh, the treasures again. So it's like, uh... Okay, I can kind of understand since there's been years between Final Fantasy IV and Final Fantasy IV the after years. But I'm pretty sure there's only been like an hour between our both our visits. I mean, not maybe not in this case since it's like uh, several years. Uh, okay, how do I open up the map again? Oh, I do think it's down... There's going to be a treasure down here. Is it going to be worth it though? A tent? Oh, I could have used a tent earlier instead of my... Uh, my potion and a thunder rod. All right. I'd rather have a thunder rod than a fire rod, and actually, it's just better defense in general. So let's do it. It's gonna come in handy against the octopus. There you go. All right. So, what's waiting for us over here? I'm guessing it's the exit of the cave because there's like a a second cave on the second level, and in that cave. Uh, I'm just gonna check just in case. One thing about having an annoyingly high rate of encounters in a game like this is that you tend to gain a ton of levels. Which comes in handy. Ooh. I forgot about this. How far does it go? Oh, I guess... Being able to use the rods to cast spells is actually kind of handy. Not gonna lie. Phew. Poor I'm almost died in this one. Thank god I bought the, some of that, uh... Some of that, uh, uh... Phoenix down, just in case that would've happened. That would've been disastrous. Okay, where am I going? Okay. I've had enough of these random encounters. There's a little bit too many of them. They don't take too long to do, like to battle, though the animation can be a little annoying sometimes, but uh, what's annoying is having to go into Windows Movie Maker and editing, editing, editing them out. So let's hope this is worth it. Hermes Sandals, are you freaking kidding me? Oh my god. Please tell me this raises your speed permanently. Last time we had one of these, I didn't do anything with it. It casts haste. Why would you make me go all this way for a freaking hell, a uh, haste spell. If you guys haven't... I'm about to throw this game out the window. <laughs> anyway, if you guys haven't played or haven't seen Cosmic Star Heroine, uh, Heroine, yes. Um, check it out. It was at E3. They had a demo of it at E3, but they didn't, um, like, there's not, like, a full, like, good quality video of the demo, but there is a, I think it's RPG Gamer has a, a video where they filmed it off their camera while, uh, Robert, uh, Boyd. Basically, the game plays a lot like Chrono Trigger, so there's no random battles, and, uh, you guys know, because I've only said this a million times in my videos, that I absolutely despise anything that's random in games. Which makes it odd that I'm a huge JRPG fan. But I hate when you miss, and I hate when you explore for nothing, and I hate useless treasures. But I feel that these guys actually get it. They just get that. that... So they just remove all those elements from the game. Um, there's no missing. I mean, I don't know how damage is calculated, but it's never useless. And um, the way status effects work in their game is that basically a monster, or... A monster, including, like, uh, boss monsters, has, uh, endurance. But, like, endurance for, like, different types of attacks. 
but instead of just being a percentage of, uh, like, let's say I wanted to cast slow. Well, most bosses in RPGs are immune to slow, like, don't even try. So, these bosses have, like, a endurance, which acts like as, like, secondary HP, if you will. So what's in here? Unicorn horn, nice. And his second... Anyway, so the second you use um, slow on a boss, basically what happens is you reduce their their slow HP, if you will, and once you beat that threshold, they actually become slowed. So maybe you won't. So maybe you won't cast slow on the first cast, but eventually you will definitely get through. Hmm, we're at the exit already. No, no, not just yet. What? Can't you feel it? The presence of a monster nearby? A big one! Huh. Oh, yeah, now that you mention it. Things are about to get serious. We, we had better get some rest once we're back above ground. Yup. Palom is absolutely out of MP. You've got that right. Well, Palom's always down for a nap. Alright. Let's use... a cottage. Or a tent. I'm not really sure which one would be best right now. Fully restore, or restore... There, yeah, let's try it. We're gonna get a new moon, though. Currently, it's white magic that's strong, so... Alright, let's save. And let's see how far we can get through here. Okay, so treasure... Or maybe no treasure. Well, wait! Wait a minute, Palom, that's too dangerous! That monster's at the bottom of this waterfall. Isn't there any other path? Only for sissies. Doesn't look like it. You scared? Oh, no, no, of course not. So, let's go. Oh, Palom is so brave. He'd make such a great sage. Oh, okay, so... Down the water we go! Alu? Allons-y! I think there's actually a little bit of a mini maze at the bottom, but not not a very big one. And there should be treasures. Oh no. There's actually uh oh I forgot about this. I don't really feel like going through a bunch of battles right now. There's a boss coming. I think I goofed it. Yeah, there's no way uh Palom's MP was fully restored by that tent, so I definitely screwed up there. I didn't even bother to look, I just assumed they were full. So I'm gonna start running a little bit from a few battles here and there, only because, I mean, I don't have the MP to deal with everything plus the boss, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna have the time to, uh... Well, actually, I do have a dry ether, so... How much is that? There's 150? I guess I can kinda help before a boss fight, fight so maybe I'll, I'll use some of it. Oh, there we go, that'll help too. Alright. Wait. Did I just miss that? How do you get down there? Oh, that's where I landed. I thought for a second I missed a small area. Please make it, please. Ah! I accidentally ran away from that one. Didn't really mean to. Because I don't want... Because as soon as... Forum attacks the mini mages, they kind of like trigger a, a spell that it, and it can be hold. And I don't want poor uh, Palom to be hold or to be held down. Uh, silver armlet. Alright, I'm gonna give that one to Porum because we know that she's gonna be the one. And I don't know what's gonna happen after this wizard, f this fight, so I'm gonna give her the wizard hat as well. Only because this is her chapter and I don't wanna lose it. All right, we're almost there. Let's just survive a little bit. Just a little bit longer. We can make it. We can, and I'm gonna use uh, just a 
I think a cure one should bring everybody up to full HP. Oh, I don't think Palrum had even been touched yet. And I'm gonna wait until the battle to use the other. So maybe I'll be able to finish this monster off without actually using it. This is the same monster we beat in the first game. Here goes my first test on the path of sagehood. Nobody says that, Palum. Come on, man. Be real. Show some respect for the monster. Don't let your guard down. Show some respect for these monsters. I know, I know. I got this. Cooler mammoth. What? A mammoth? Alright, so we've got Thunder we're gonna cast on this thing. And we can actually just do... Uh, we're gonna start with the Protect, because th this thing does a lot of physical damage from what I know. And we're gonna use Thunder as much as we can. Ooh, that kinda hurt, so maybe we'll do a Shell as well. But Thunder is definitely its weak spot. And it seems to have a million attacks too, so... Maybe I should uh, cast a heal before it does another... What was that? Did that heal it? That healed it! Oh, they tricked me. They definitely tricked me. I don't have shell, actually, so... Azukura. Those jerks. They tricked me. I'm gonna have to use... Ah, nice. I'm gonna have to use fire, I think. Oh man, oh man, oh man. If it's weak against fire, uh, if it's casting Blizzard... Oh my goodness. So many attacks. Ow. Ow. Come on. Weakness? Good. Can't wait till it starts losing some of its legs, because to be honest, I don't feel... Let's just see if uh, Thunder does it. Okay, so it does hurt a little bit, but not much. So it's not really worth it. I should keep her on the healing duty. Uh, man, oh man, oh man. Alright, let's do a Fyra. Uh, and you do a Cura again. Ah, oh, now he's doing Drain. Ah, oh, are you freaking kidding me? I'm already low on... Okay, that was health. I thought that was uh, MP. Osmos is MP, I guess. I just don't want him to take the few. I have like two casts of Fyra left on Palom. So I'm probably going to end up using the small ether on him. Come on, lose some legs. Nope. Not having any of that. So use the small... Not the dry one. Just a small regular one. And of course, you use fire again. Why is it not losing its legs yet? Usually a few casts, a few rounds. Because all these extra attacks is just slowing down the game. Uh, of course it'll cast a shell. Is there two groups of monsters? Ah, there you go. Good. Maybe we made this harder on ourselves than we needed to, and we probably wasted that MP item, but... Uh, whatever. I tend to hoard those to the end of the game, and then I end up having like 99 of them, so this is really not that big of a deal. And we learned some valuable skills. Not really, Berserk's not that useful. Ha! So much for Sage Trial number one. Oak! You know, that's violent. Ouch! Stop abusing, that's, that's... What was that for? You had your eyes on that monster from the start, didn't you? Hmm. You knew Tella had problems with it, and you wanted to test your metal on it for yourself. Yeah, something like that. Hmm. What now? Is is this really the kind of thinking a sage would have, Palum? Yeah, the monster was a threat, of course. Maybe you should think a little more about how to use your magic. Hmm. Well... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This monster was a threat to the village of Kaipo and people traveling through this waterway. I stopped it. I did a good thing. Several more years later. There you go. I am glad I got 
I changed the equipment. That was good thinking on my part right there. Oh, man. There she is. Yes, we know who that is. We've seen her multiple times now. And what's she looking for? Uh, where is... Where did Palom run off to this time? Our first trip to Miss in years, and he decides to pull a no-show on me. Oh. Huh? And now look who's here. Who is it? Is it Sid? Is it Theodore? Who is it? Yeah, that's Sid, all right. There you go. Good stuff. Sid, Sid, Sid. Man, you're still as fat as always, and your beard's only getting bigger. Horum, that you? Yeah, you've completely grown up on me, girl. Sorry to keep you waiting, didn't mean to. Oh, not at all. I should have been the one thanking you for preparing an airship for us and everything. Actually, you're the one helping me out here. I just upgraded the Falcon, you see. It needed a test flight or two anyway. I suppose he's not coming. Huh? Oh, no, no. It's nothing. Thanks again. So, we're headed for Mist? That's right. Ooh, wait till you see Rydia. She's more beautiful than ever now, uh, ever now, you know? I'm sure she is. It's been quite a few years since we last met. Haha. <laughs> you'd definitely, you'd certainly give her a run for her money, though, Porum. Oh, Sid, don't flatter me like that. I don't ever lie to women. Porum, that's the ever-loving truth. In that case, thank you very much. Oh, man, come on. You ready to go, then, my dear? The Falcon's a dream to ride on now. The upgrade's really done the trick this time. Oh, Sid. Nothing's changed. Ooh. Oh, I'm not gonna be in control, of course. Or am I? Come on, give me control. Please, 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 please. Please, please. Ah. Yo, I know the Falcon can go a lot faster than that, so... Giddy up. There he is, after all. Palum, what are you doing here? Yes, we know. She just said his name, and we just played his chapter. We know very much who that guy is. What, am I supposed to report every little detail of my life to you? Uh, Palum. Ha! Can you believe this girl, Sid? Huh? What? Oh, yeah. No, no, Palum. You really ought to tr treat the woman, uh, the women in your life better, you know? Like I do. I would happily if the woman in question didn't spend all day giving me lip. How long has Palum been aboard the Falcon, Sid? He paid me a visit over in Baron, actually. What? Palum, you crossed the Devil's Road into Baron? Is there something wrong with that? I was training to be a saint, remember? You can't just go through the Devil's Road without telling anyone, Palum. What if something happened to you in there? Then what? Yeah, yeah, what are you, my mother now? Hey, now, I know you're a rebellious senior and all, Palum, but come on. Yes, uh, I don't think Sid's ever been in there. It has nothing to do with that. Haha, <laughs> so I guess the two of you are really growing up, aren't you? All right, now we're landing. Let's go to Mist. Please let me control. Good. I'm going to end the episode here. So as always, I'm your host, Mr. Gazillion. Thanks for watching. And in the, I guess in the next episode, we'll take on uh, Mist and we'll see what Rydia has to say. So uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye now. Hey, guys. Thank you very much for watching my video. I appreciate every single view. If you enjoyed what you watched, feel free to take a look at the next video. 
or peek at a random video, don't forget to subscribe. See you guys next time.